this video, we're going to learn how to make a few different bases. We're going to learn how to make a basic marble surface, some tiles, and some cobblestones. We have a few examples here. This is a marble base that I did for Cool Mini or Not. And you can see we have see the cork, you can see the rocks and gravel, you can see my pattern with our tiles. Same thing, another one that I did for Cool Mini. See the rocks and gravel and cork. And you can see the carved sculpey surface. Well, this time with a slightly different pattern. We have some other painted examples here. This is a marble tile, but I didn't carve any texture. I just left it flat and painted in the marble surface. Here we have this, a painted example of that. Same thing with our tile base. This is also another tile base. You can see the width of the Sculpey is different. And we put it on an angle, even though the pattern's the same. You can see it's a different look, even though the idea is the same. And it also work on cavalry bases, large creature bases. And the idea is to take a basic pattern and use it in multiple ways. So the next thing we're going to cover is types of Sculpey, different types of cork, and your rocks and gravel. The most important surface that we're going to use in this project is our baked Sculpey. This is the most common sheet that I use. This was made in the clay extruder. You can see they're all a pretty, really similar, uniform width. There's other widths that we can use. This is probably about triple the width of standard piece that comes out of the clay extruder. And you can see the difference in how this breaks versus your standard piece. And then we have some massive Sculpey here, and this is really, really thick. Essentially a thick piece like this substitutes for the cork. So the next thing we're going to talk about are those different types of cork. Here are the different types of cork that I like to use. Start this off at the most common. This type of cork is what most people use to put under potted plants. It can also be used to make cork boards. And you can see what the thickness is here. And this is what we use to put under our Sculpey. We have some thicker types also. This, as you can see, much thicker than the other type of cork. This is only used in cork boards. Now, I'm going to break off a little piece. As you can see, I'm going to break off a piece of this. As you can see the texture is very different. You can see this piece has very broad fissures. This is a very tight grain here. Now this, I try and compress it here. You see it doesn't really compress at all. This, on the other hand, 
that will compress. So when you put your Scopey on top of that, here's the tools that I use most commonly. And I'm going to work on my Scopey bases for tile, marble, and cobblestones. This is a set of wood carving tools, anywhere between six, ten, a dozen, and a set, usually ten to twelve. See, there's different types of blades. And these are three that I use very often. I want the angle, a straight, and then this one can see has a 90 degree angle. This is perfect for carving some of these deep textures in the base. A few more. These tools usually come individually or a set of two. I think this is actually a set of two. And this is the end that we're really interested in here. Again, it's something that'll carve out these textures, especially for your cobblestone base. And we have, this is more of a sculpting tool, but also has a point to it, which you can use for carving out texture. And this is a favorite of mine. This is a scribing tool. It's actually designed to cut into plastic. So you can also carve these really tight little cracks in the marble. And a little bit of a beveled edge. Whereas this tool just has a point. So this tends to catch the Scopey more. This tends to glide along the surface more. And you have a two, two different kind. This one, a little more of a lengthy bevel. This one's a little more of a shallow angle. And then an X-Acto knife. This is really the sharpest of all the tools. This is the one that you have to be a little more careful as you're using it. And these wood tools, which are not quite as sharp. There's another tool that I like to use. This is more of a long nose pliers, needle nose pliers. This is good for breaking the Sculpey. You want to have something that's a little more precise than just breaking it with your fingers, which you can see tend to just make these little circular divots. This lets us make a little more variety in the cut versus that. And this is a fairly basic tool. You can find at hardware stores. Even a regular set of needle nose pliers would be fine. And then I like to have a brush to brush away some of the dust because that kind of gets caught up in your patterns and you can brush that away. And it's, it's an older brush, it's seen some better days. And that just about covers it for tools. So now that we have our materials and our tools, we're going to start off with our first marble base. So let's get started on our marble base. Now there's a few different types of marble bases that we can make. This one that has our patterns carved in. It can just be a flat or broken up into segments. 
start with this type here, which means we're going to need our base, our cork, and our piece of Sculpey that we did in the clay extruder. So first we need to break off some of this cork. Now I like to have overhang on mine. You can see some of these are a little more flush. This a little less flush to the base. A little bit of overhang. The overhang is not so bad as long as you support the Sculpey with some cork. What we're going to do is we're going to break this cork right about here. So, I've gone pretty much, well, we'll follow the line of the base. Break this here. Maybe not make it quite as even. And it can sit this way. Not say you didn't want this type of overhang. Easy to just break that off. And I try to make an interesting pattern even with the with the cork. Instead of it just being a square, I just let a little bit of this extend. You can see here how it bevels this way. It's the opposite. Here it's pretty much straight up and down. And we can super glue that to the base. I use this glue mostly because of this right here. It's thick. It's almost like a gel. These are thin super glues that are a little bit more runny. They will work also. But they, this, this Scopey and Cork are very absorbent. And I find that the gel a little bit easier to work with. I think uh, Gorilla Glue also comes with the thick. Now that we have a cork, we want to cover that with Scopey. So I'm going to use my hands to break this. I can also use this tool. See, I can follow this line. You saw how that was broken off. Now here, want to follow this line. Doesn't have to be exact. It can be have a little bit of overhang. It can even fall short of this line. So here we go. So we have our cork, we have our Sculpey. I'm going to glue those together. Now in this case, the base is entirely covered. There might be times Grab another base. Maybe your cork doesn't completely cover the base. Now I'm going to get rid of this. This is what I call factory edge. So this was originally a piece of cork that's supposed to go underneath the plant. It's in the shape of a circle. I'm going to get rid of this edge. I use the pliers to snip away at some of that edge. There we go. You can see now, like this piece, this has some gaps where you can see down to the base. And I've got a base like that. I have some gravel that I like to use. Three basic types. So this is a heavier. You can see it here, bigger pieces of rocks. This is more of a medium gravel. And I'll set this next to the heavy. So we've got our heavy, our medium. 
and there's different types of light ballast that I'll use. This is kind of a mixture of light ballast and sand. Put that down so you can see our different types. And you'll see how this comes into play after we glue this down and get our Sculpey on top of that. So let's glue this down and you're gonna see when I glue this down some of these slot of bases are open like this, some are closed but I'm gonna cover the slot as much as I can with the cork so that when we glue on our rocks and gravel it doesn't just fall through this. Now you could always cover this with some tape, either some masking tape, some painters tape, but it's sometimes easier just to cover that slot entirely. So we're going to get some Sculpey on top of this base, and I'm going to use this tool to do my first break. There we go. We're going to also leave a little bit of overhang here and show how we can use these rocks and gravel to make that interesting and also a little bit stronger. So you can see I'm using this tool to snip away the extra Sculpey. Now you could glue it down first but I'm not going to glue this down just in case. Sometimes Sculpey is unpredictable and it breaks in a weird way. This way if I break it and I don't like it I can just move on back to my original larger piece of Sculpey. So I'm going to snip away some of this and we're going to stop there. See I have a little bit of overhang here. I'm going to glue this down. And we're going to let that set a little bit. I'm going to go back to our original piece. Now you can see my original edge. Yes, there's some variations to it. But I want to establish even more so this is a little chips broken away here. I'm going to do that here. A few different tools we can use for that. We have an X-Acto. We have this beveled wood carving tool. Let's use this first. Now what I'm going to do is keep my thumb down here in case this comes away. And you can see I can feel this touching my thumb, but it's really not quite as sharp as the X-Acto. So what I'm going to do is carve away some of this. Now let's try the X-Acto. I'm going to do the same thing. And now I'm really going to make sure that this knife doesn't slide off into my thumb. So thumb goes down here. and carve with the X-Acto and the Sculpey is going to be supported by this cork and instead of me carving here and guessing what the shape is going to be, it's already attached and the cork will stop the knife from cutting too deep. So you can see now we have, compared to this, a little more of a dramatic edge. Looks a little older, a little more broken. So now that this is set up a little more, we're going to carve away some of this. Again, I'm going to try and leave this overhang intact.
Again, trying to keep the thumb down here as I carve. And you can see I'm just, even this, I can hold it this way. And all I'm doing is just chipping away. Now, both of these with that edge aged. So now that's where our rocks and gravel are going to come into play. Because we're going to, so we've got a little bit of an edge here. We don't want this all the way around, it's, it gets a little bit boring. So that's where we're going to put our rocks and gravel along the edge. Now for that, you can use wood glue. I've started to use this. A little stronger form it. It dries almost, I think it might maybe even dries a little bit faster than wood glue. Wood glue is fine. Uh, the stronger, the better. Because again, this cork and scopey are very absorbent and you want to hold your rocks and gravel as well as possible. So let's take our first base and I always start with the heavier rocks. I'm going to throw out a few of those. And the other thing that I like to have to do this is a brush Again, that's seen better days. I'm just going to put this on part of the edge. And let's move this around. Take some of the excess, put it here. And what this is going to do is hide this edge and also make it the seam a little stronger. So let's maybe grab one of our larger pieces, take our medium, and there we go, and the fine sand. And the reason I went in this pattern the large, medium, and fine. If I was to start with a fine sand, I'd cover all the glue, and none of this would stick. When I just put one or two pieces of the large gravel on my glue, there's plenty of glue left to hold the medium. See, the medium didn't cover it all because I wanted to leave a little bit left for the fine. So that's why I always work in this pattern, the large, the medium, and then the fine. Let's do the rest of this base. And means I don't do it all the way around. Just in some areas. And if I fail need to, I take my brush, move that glue around. Again, maybe just one piece of the large medium fine and we'll let that set now we've got this base this is going to get more interesting with the glue because we have more places to cover put down that basic bead glue and we'll move that around. Take my brush, hopefully you can see, and fill in this gap with the brush. And now we have this open area, put one nice piece, heavy, take some of the medium, 
fill around that, but not entirely. Fine. So now, that gives us something that looks a little more like this. I'm going to work the other areas. This one has some pretty deep overhang. So I'm going to make sure that the brush gets the glue in there. And what that's going to do is it's going to support this overhang, keep it from snapping off. Be surprised at just how strong that can be. So I'm going to put a few pieces of the heavier gravel in. Some medium. And the fine. One last area to do. Piece of the heavy. Medium. And finish it with light gravel. Clear some of this away. So, we have these two surfaces ready to carve. But this glue is wet, so we're going to set these aside. Need that to set. That's why I have a few pieces that I already have our rocks and gravel. And we're going to carve this texture. Now you can draw this out ahead of time if you want this pattern. You can see that I did it with a pencil here. Now I don't really use the straight edge at all. You can. See I drew this first 90 degree pattern. I'm going to follow that up here with another. And 45 degree bevel. And you can see how I've tried to position this so that these are more randomly played. I didn't want to just follow the base. See, this is an angle pattern within the square. Now I'm going to use a second edge right here. And this kind of is a piece of trim, maybe some kind of inlay. And what this does gives me a little difference in between how this pattern works and this. Breaks up the space in a more uneven way. So now that we've got this pattern drawn out, there's a few different tools that we can use to carve this. Scribe, first wood carving tool, and this. I'm going to start off with this one, show how you can use that. So I'm going to hold down the base here, and I'm going to carve this way, not this way. So I'm going to set this down and work a channel. And you can see some of the scopey. That little pile of scopey right there. So you can see it carved this little channel. Let's do the same thing, we're going to go this way.